Hey, Chief. Break it, Snabby. Has the verdict come in yet? No. You're taking an awful chance. Now, you keep on writing. That verdict will come in all right. There's no loopholes in that case. And I'm going to beat the taps of the street this time. It's the last thing I do. Miss Colby. Brooks, come here. Yeah. Get a lot of pictures. Gazzotti and his women. Gazzotti and his family. Make a big spread. Okay. Hey, Brooks, you put some prison bars in front of that. Yeah. Make this a three-column spread. Gazzotti sitting in the electric chair. Okay. Come on, make it snappy. You've only got 20 minutes to get to the street. Now, Murphy, you got your six-point banner? Okay, put it on the presses as soon as that batch I shut up gets in the lead. Go to it. Get her on the street. Hey, Chapman, yes, put that in the chute. Go ahead and hit it here. Got it? job and let me know what happens every minute. How do you suppose he did it, Chief? Oh, I know. It is that Houdini lawyer of his. You must have done it with mirrors. All right. Well, forget Gazzotti. We got something better in Durant. Put him all over one, two, and three. That's great stuff. Society lawyer stuffs jewelry in his pocket and frees a racketeer. Get pictures of Durant at Newport, Palm Beach. Set his matches. Go on, get him. Snap into it. Boy, I said you'd get plenty. I'm sending a check for 50 grand inside of an hour. Say, with you as my mouthpiece, we can run this town. No, no, I'll keep your money. What's the matter? I don't want it, Tony. I had too much fun. Hey, ain't you gonna let me do anything for you? Well, I didn't drop me off at the office. Oh, I mean something real. I gotta do something. Ain't there somebody you don't like? Yeah, yeah, be careful now. Ah, you get me off. You can get that idea right out of your head. If you're ever guilty, I'll help to send you to the chair. I bet you'd let me fry if the cops had the goods on me. You know I wouldn't. I'd give three cheers if you got what you deserved. You're a bad citizen, Tony. Public welfare would be improved if you were rubbed out. Yes, and you two fellas also. Get around there, you mugs. Gee, I never run across a guy like you. You can put the burn up on me and not only make me take it, but like it. Why don't you reform and be my partner? All right, I'll think it over, Tony. Well, after all, I ain't a bad guy, am I? You're a menace to civilization. Boy, I don't... <laughs> well, you just keep up liking me. Well, see you later, Tony. Wait a minute. Let them take a look around, see if the coast is clear. Say, when are we going to celebrate? I can't now. I have to take someone to lunch. Oh, Miss Leonard. How'd you know that? Say. <laughs> you probably know what kind of toothpaste I use. You don't. You're an old-fashioned guy and use tooth powder. Well, <laughs> you sure go into things. My boys combed you over plenty when you took my case. Why well, even know what mark you got for algebra in your second year in St. John's school? <laughs> you tell me. What is algebra? <laughs> See you later, Tony. All right, goodbye, Tony. See you later. Come on, Well... Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll uh, see you later. <laughs> Morning, Mary. Get Miss Leonard on the phone, will you? Mrs. Carverson and Mr. Rutherford want to see you immediately. All right. Well, you got to say that I'll be there in a half an hour to take you to luncheon. Hello? Well? I won my case. Aren't you going to congratulate me? You know the way we feel about that. Yes, but I won my point. I proved that he was innocent. What does it matter if he was innocent? He was guilty a hundred times before. We told you not to take that case. We've lost three of our oldest clients. All right. 
I'll bring you in a hundred to take their place. We don't want to handle racketeers and gangsters. Your father and your father's father built this firm. How do you think they'd feel about you now? Have you been to your clubs? Have you talked to any decent people? You'll find we're not the only ones who feel this way. Oh, why waste time talking? Do you intend to continue to handle such cases? Certainly. Oh, I know they don't make choice clients. But I'd rather work for them than be writing out wills for old people like this Mrs. Welton, who left a million dollars to a favorite Pekingese. It wasn't a Pekingese, it was a college. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, let's keep to the point. There's a kick in fighting for a man's life. There's mystery, there's intrigue. I like the troubles of bootleggers, chorus girls, and head waiters. They're human, they're alive. Then, then you refuse to give them up? Absolutely, positively, and definitely. Then we'll have to ask you to withdraw from the firm. Withdraw? Exactly. You don't mean that. We most certainly do. We will not have this office used as a refuge for all the riffraff of society. Very well, gentlemen. We'll draw up the papers immediately. Yeah, that'll be soon enough for me. Well, Mary, so long. I'll see you anon. Oh, Mr. Durant, Miss Leonard isn't in town. She isn't? No, she's spending the weekend on Long Island at Mr. Sadell's place. Oh, that's a good idea. If anyone wants me, they can reach me out there. Say, what, what is this? We're your bodyguard. <laughs> I don't need any bodyguard. Tony don't want nothing to happen to you. Well, there's nothing going to happen to me. That's mighty nice of Tony, but you'd better go on back to him. He'll get sore. We got orders. You just tell him thanks, and I don't need you. Is that all right with you? OK. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you've got another guest. Yes, sir. Where's everybody? On the veranda, sir. Uh, bring those things in the car, will you? Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Hello, Jack. Hello. 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 Well, this is grand after that old stuffy city. Where's Sue? I think she's playing tennis with Tom. Well, all right, I'll look her up. Come home. Oh, please, Jack. I always knew you were beautiful, but I didn't remember how beautiful. Well, I don't wonder you've forgotten. Come on, let's duck the gang. Go have lunch in the lawn. Oh, I can't leave here. Oh, sure. What's the matter, you... Sue? Can't you? Hello, Tom. Oh, hello, Jack. How, how are, are you? you? That's it. Is it over? All over. Did you win? Yes. Oh, congratulations. Boy, you're a wizard. Oh, thanks. So that calls for a big celebration, doesn't it? Oh, I've been trying to get Sue to desert the party for a while. Well, go ahead. I'll get another oh, partner. No, I want to play. Oh, snap out of it. I'll see you later, Jack. All right. All right, darling, what do you say? You haven't come near me in four weeks. I telephoned. You haven't tried to see me in all that time. Now you suddenly turn up and expect me to drop everything for you. Darling, I know it. I've been rotten. But I've been eating and sleeping in this case. Honestly, I have. Now, what could I do? You could have given it up as I asked you to. Darling, I don't like to rub it in, but uh, I won. Doesn't that make any difference to you? No. You know how I hate you working for people like that the lowest, commonest type of people on earth. Gangsters, racketeers, chorus girls. Darling, I've had one battle today. Come on. Don't let you and I fight. You know, I missed you terribly. I love you more than anything else in the world. You've got a funny way of showing it. All right, I'm going to make it my business to show you for the rest of my life. All right. You can start right now. Promise me one thing. Sure, anything. Give up these criminal cases. Uh oh Oh, no, I can't promise that. More than anything else in the world. I owe, darling. This is different. It's my business, my work. I can't be dictated to about that. Very well. Oh, Sue, dear. Don't act that way, please. I mean it, Jack. I've had four weeks to think this thing over. I can't see myself married to a gangster lawyer. Sure, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. So am I, but... Well, let's call it a day, Jack. All right. Just as you say. Get my things, I'm going back to town. Yes, sir. Come here. 
I thought I told you, you that know, I... Oh, boss. Aren't we going to stay here, boss? No. But to mind, they treat you right. Wait a minute. Wait. No, no. Everything's all right. Everything's all right. All right. Be right behind you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you've got to do that, get in here. You might as well be comfortable. Hurry up. Step on it. Did I have a smoke? You smoke? Sorry, I haven't got a drink off here. All right, put those things right in here. Are you boys comfortable? You got a robe? You got a mat? <laughs> Not bad. Say, say, you oughtn't to drink so much. I'm celebrating. Oh, now don't go crazy. Just because your girl talked you out on the curbstone. Oh, doesn't... so they reported that too, did they? Why don't you lay off that stuff? What you ought to do is to tie up with some friendly little gal. Something loving around the house. What do you say? You can have any one of them you want. Tony, you're a dirty-minded little rat. There you go again. Boy, I like you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This dance music is coming to you from the Pinnacle Club at 52nd Street and Broadway. This is the playtime spot of the elite. Come on over and join the merry throng. It's a big night. Let's go, boys. Sue, you know, I think you were crazy to do that this afternoon. What difference does this business make? Oh, it isn't only that. It's everything. It's his whole life. He likes different people, different things. If we got married, he'd probably bring the taxi driver home to dinner. Well, I know. That's what's so grand about him. He's human. So am I. Let's have a cigarette. Of course, I know I'm talking against my own interests, but... What are your interests? You know perfectly well. You've known for years. Tell me. I've forgotten. Don't use me, Sue. What do you mean? Don't use me to make him jealous. I'm not. I tell you, this whole thing has been over with me for weeks. Sue, if I thought... Stop thinking. You're making an awful mistake. He's a better bet than I am. Mm. Don't be so modest. Darling, I can't remember when I haven't been in love with you. Tom. Yes, dear. Aren't there some odds and ends you ought to tie up? You mean, uh, Mamie Montaigne? Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't bother me, but but I would like to know it's definitely over before we got married. That's over right now. I shouldn't like any trouble with that type of girl. She won't make any trouble. Sure. I'll make sure. <laughs> Hello, Lily. Hello, honey. Be right out. Hello, darling. What are you doing? 
Mimi, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, Lily. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can go. Yes, ma'am. What's the idea? Well, Mimi, you're a grand girl, and we've had a lot of good times together. But, uh, what? Well, things have got to be different. Something's happened. Oh. Got another girl? No. You're lying. Now, Mimi, please don't take it like this. Holy mackerel! You come in here and tell me that it's all over and expect me to break out laughing, I suppose. Well, we both knew it couldn't last. I don't see why not. You've got no kick coming. I've been absolutely on the square with you. I haven't looked at another man. I know you've been grand, but I'm going to get married. Oh, that's it. Well, who is she? One of those high hat dames, I suppose. I'll show you. You can't give me the runaround like this. I'm not trying to. I'm going to take care of you. I'll make a settlement on you. You can't get rid of me that easy. I gave up a soft birth to come to you. I gave up a guy that was nuts about me. A decent guy. Krellerman? Yes, Krellerman. Now, Mimi, a racketeer. Well, what of it? He was all right with me. He wouldn't have pulled a rotten trick like this. And you're not going to get away with it. I'll show you. I'll spread this thing all over the newspapers. I'll show that lady friend of yours that... If you dare to do that... Don't dare me. I've got nothing to lose. I'll do plenty. Now, see here, Mimi. You can hold me up for money. I expected that. And I'm willing to pay. I said I'd make a settlement on you, and I will. You can take it or leave it. I don't care. But if you want to make any trouble for me, I warn you, take care. You dirty, stuck-up snob! I want to speak to Jim Krellerman. It's Mimi Montaigne. Hello? It's Mimi, Jim. Well, where have you been? Oh, I haven't been around. How's your boyfriend? Who do you mean? Park Avenue. <laughs> you must be thinking of my twin sister. Oh, sure. I was uh, wondering what you were doing. Same old thing. Well, I thought I'd call you up. Thanks. I'd like to see you sometime. Anytime you say. What are you doing tonight? I'll be here. Why don't you come on over? I'll try to make it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stay on the right side, sister. Stay on the right side, sister. Stay on the right side. Not too much vermouth. A very pretty dress you have. Oh, this. I couldn't remember what I had on. Well, you look very charming tonight. Thank you. Have you changed your hairdress? You uh, remember? Of course I do. Well, here we are. Happy days. Wait a minute, I don't... So it's all over. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Do you want me to put it in writing? No, that isn't necessary. You ought to be here any minute now. Who? Sidel. Who asked him? You did. I did. Oh, yes, you did. 
You wanted to tell him something. Tell him it was all over. Oh, I see. You have it all planned. Do you expect me to put on a scene in front of this whole mob? No, you can do that in private. Private? Here? There are other places. The roof, for instance. Just so as I know that it's all over. Okay. Come on. Let's go. Well, we'll see you, Miss Fontaine. Take his hat and coat and tell him to come in. You're all right, Jim. You're twice the gentleman he thinks he is. Mr. Sedell. Hello, Ann. I'm glad to see you again. I'm here to see Mimi. Well, that's all right with me. Uh, don't you want to take off your coat? No, thanks. Well, but you will stop and have a drink. No, thanks. You don't have to act like that, you know. Forget it, forget it. Let's get this over with. What is it? There are a few things I'd like to tell you. Oh, but not here, not here. Come on out here. He's got a lot of nerve busting in here. It's all right with me. I haven't got any strings on Mimi, and Mimi hasn't got any strings on me. Now, don't be old fashioned. Why don't you drink up? Come on, what's the matter with the music? Did you hear that? What? It sounded like a shot. Yes, I heard it. Ah! What's the matter? Mimi! Mimi! Jackson! Yes, sir! Send for the police! Good morning, Layton. Good morning, sir. As a matter of idle curiosity, will you tell me why I slept at that end? You said you wished to sleep with your head toward the engine, sir. Oh. Yes, I vaguely remember. I went to a party last night. Where was it? Right here, sir. Uh, did I have a good time? Yes, sir. Good. You were in a very generous mood, sir. But I persuaded the young lady to whom you gave the grand piano. It'd be difficult to get movers so late at night. Quite commendable. I also persuaded the other young lady that it might ruin the Whistler etching to carry it out in the rain. That is all that, huh? Oh, well. What time did they leave? Right after you passed out, sir. Well, I hope you took over my duties as host, Layton. Yes, sir. I took the big blonde home. <coughs> I must say the young ladies conducted themselves very well. There were only six broken tumblers, three plates cracked, and five holes burned in the rugs. Come on, take this away. Get me a drink. But, Mr. Durant, are you going to continue this drinking? I'll drink as long as I have a hangover, and I'll have a hangover as long as I drink. Uh, it's a vicious circle, Layton. Mr. Durant! Mr. Durant! Oh, Mr. Durant! Will Will you please, please, please stop that screaming. Return to the pantry immediately. Mr. Durant! Mr. Durant! Yes, yes, what is it? Mr. Siddell, sir, he's in terrible trouble. Answer that. Yes, sir. Just this minute, seen the papers. Jack, I'm going out of my mind. Tell me about it. I haven't had a chance to read them. Tom's been arrested. They say it's, it's murder. No, no, no. Here, sit down. Tell me, your picture in the papers, what did you have to do with it? Tom and I are engaged. Oh. I see. Rather quick, wasn't it? I know if I had any part, I wouldn't come to you. But I was so desperate, I didn't know what to do. You see, I feel responsible. I told him to go to her. I wanted to be sure she wouldn't make trouble. They had a fight yesterday, and then he started drinking, and I'm afraid he got angry, and... Oh, it's so awful. Everything's against him. Yes, yes, sounds pretty bad. Jack! Jack, you'll help him, won't you? Won't you? 
You wouldn't let them. Oh, I know it must seem funny to you after all those things I said about those cases. But, Jack, this is different. This is Tom. You wouldn't let your feeling against me keep you from helping him. You don't have to do that, you know. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so desperate, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll go right down to the tombs and see him. Oh, thank you, Jack. Let him call down for a cab. I'll drop you off the house. Oh, don't stop for me. I'll get home by myself. Jack, I wonder... Could you forgive me? What do you care whether I forgive you or not? As long as I do what you want. Why, of course I won't forgive you. Why, you speak as though you hated me. Why not? Why should you expect my love to last any longer than yours? I never knew you could be so cruel. You changed. Yes, I salute the maker of that change. You're not the only woman in the world, you know. Lots of other attractive women, hundreds of them. Oh, so few. Dreadful thing, isn't it, sir? Yes, it is. Get. Get Lieutenant Stevens of the Homicide Squad and ask when he can see me. Yes, sir. Do you think he's guilty, sir? Huh? Oh, I hope not. For her sake. Well, I'm afraid he is. Hello. Who's speaking? No, this isn't Mr. Drant. Who's speaking? Who is it? He won't say. He says he wants to speak to you personally, sir. Hello? Yes, it's Drant speaking. Who is it? Never mind names. Just a friend of yours telling you that if you know what's best for you, you'll lay off the Sadal case. Understand? Leave it alone. Don't touch it. If you do, we'll strew your body from the battery to the bombs. Got it? Who is this? Hello? Who is it? Hello? Hello? What is it, sir? What is it? Someone just convinced me that Sadal is innocent. Call Lieutenant Stevens and tell him I'll be down right away. Here they are. Let's have a look at them. Careful, they're not dry yet. Roof, the body, and the girl. That's where she got it. Good-looking gal. Why did these guys always bump off the good-looking ones? Private meeting or anybody? Well, 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 Mr. Durant, how are you? Fine. Glad to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you, Steve. How are Fine, you? Fine, thanks. Hey, hey, you didn't think of handling this, did you? So that was a friend of mine. Lay off, lay off. A man like you don't want to be tied up with a sure loser. What's the lowdown? They just sent for him again. We got some new dope. Come on, I'll take you in. Tell me, have they uh, questioned Krellerman yet? Plenty. Krellerman says he don't know why Sadell came, but as long as he was there, he went out of his way to be nice to him. Nice to the fellow that stole his girl? Ah, that was all washed up. He didn't have any grudge. What do the others say? The same thing. Krellerman was swell, but the kid came there with a chip on his shoulder. He was looking for trouble. A boy like Tom goes into a nest of gorillas with a chip on his shoulder, huh? Yeah, can you imagine? No, I can't. Tell us again just what happened. What'd you do when you got on the roof? Well, when we got out on the roof, she told me that she didn't ever want to see me again. She was through with me completely. She was going back to Krellerman. And then as she was talking, suddenly she put her hand up to her heart. And when she took away, it was covered with blood. Well, I seem to remember hearing something like a shot, but I thought it was a backfire from the street. And something struck my foot, and well, I, I was in sort of a daze, and I didn't know what I was doing, that blood and everything. I, I reached down to get it, and it was the revolver. Uh, 38? I don't know. I'd never seen it before. She was killed with a bullet from that gun. But I didn't do it. I haven't got a gun. You have a permit, haven't you? Yes, but I never bought a gun. Oh, yeah? Send in... Uh, uh, Levitoff. Yeah, uh, Levitoff. Send him in. Uh, didn't you stop at a pawn shop on your way home yesterday afternoon? No, I didn't. Levitoff, did you sell a 38 gun yesterday afternoon? Yes, sir. What time? About 4 o'clock. Could you identify the man who bought it? Yes, sir. Was this the man? Yes, sir. Why, that's a lie. He's lying. I oh, never saw okay. that man before in my life. Away. That's all, Levitoff. We won't need you anymore. Thanks. Well, what do you think now? Isn't the story a beaut? It's so crazy, it might be the truth. I'd like to talk to him. Okay. I'm sorry he's a friend of yours. He's going to get a nice, quick trial and a pleasant walk to the chair. Wait a minute, Dan. Someone to say him. See you later, old man. Okay. Eh? 
Oh, Jack. I know. Sir. Come on, sit down. Take it easy. Now. I know, but they got me nearly crazy. They've been at me and at me till they've almost got me believing that I did do it. And just now... I know. I heard it. Well, it's I... a lie. At four o'clock when he said he sold me the gun, I was walking up from the office. Have you any witnesses? No, I was alone. Well, did you meet anyone? Did you go in any shop? No, but, Jack, I swear to you, I didn't do it. I know you didn't, old man. You believe me? Yes, I do. Well, you're the first one around here that has. All right, don't you worry. Now we're going to get you out of this. You mean you'll help me? Of course I will. Even, even after Sue? Oh, don't worry about that, please. Well, Durant. Yes. Buck up now, old man. Oh, hello there. How are you? How are you? Hi. That's it. I'd like to speak to you a moment. Yes, certainly. Are you handling this case? Yes. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. Miss Leonard came to me, and I don't want to seem to be horning in, but I want to do everything I possibly can. We've been talking things over, and... Uh, yes, what? Do you want us straight from the shoulder? Ah, yeah, those are the easiest to block. We don't want you on this case. We feel that you would only prejudice the jury. You're known as a defender of the guilty. Mm, that's straight enough. Frankly, there's not much anyone can do. We're going to try to get him off on a plea of emotional insanity. Emotional insanity? Then you're going to plead guilty. What else can we do? <laughs> well, you might use that plea of insanity for yourself. <laughs> so long, old man. Hello? Uh, this is Jackson Durant, Tony. Oh, hello there, Angel. How are you? All right, say, can you get me some dope on Krellerman? From the cradle to the grave. I want to know everything he did yesterday. That's a cinch. When can you have it? Well, uh, meet me tonight about 10 at the Pinnacle Club. Okay, thanks, Tony. But wait a minute. Uh, what's up? Well, I'm interested in the Siddell case. Uh-oh, lay off of that one. Lay off. That guy's guilty as they make him. Yeah, so I've heard. So long. Well, wait a minute. You're losing your time with the policy. Big boy's waiting for you. Good evening. Hello, man. Hello, Molly. Good evening. Good evening. Hello there, Angel. How are you? Fine, thanks. Sit down. Make yourself a home. Wait, somebody with you? A couple of ladies. Oh, well, you have to have two of them now, huh? Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Anaconda's of two points. You know, I'll think, I think I'll put a little dough in this here investment. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm not interested in stocks. Tell me, did you find out anything about Krellerman? Not a thing. He's got a perfect alibi for every minute of the time, and so has everyone else on his party. You're not sticking up for him, are you? You and Krellerman haven't buried the hatchet. If I ever bury it, it'll be in his skull. Hmm. Perfect alibis, huh? Well, that's that. Hey, wait a minute. I got a little surprise for you. What? Look. The one in the black and white. Ah, pretty. Don't you care for that? Oh, I, I have to work. Now, wait a minute now. She was on Krellerman's party. You go to work on her. He's a grand kid. The kind you can take home to dinner and no hard feelings if you don't ask her to stay to breakfast. <laughs> and no hard feelings if you do, huh? <laughs> Girls, I want you to meet the guy that took the scorch right out of my pants. You know Lottie, of course. Yes, I know. Yes, Mr. Durant. This is uh, Gertie Waxted. How do you do? Couldn't do better. Well, that's just the way I feel about I'm it. I'm expecting you two to be great friends. You're not going to disappoint Tony, are you? Mm. I'd be scared to. Well, Lottie, we got a blow. Oh, that's too bad, Tony. Yeah. Ain't it? I hope you can struggle through without us. Well, we'll try. Don't Good do night. anything I wouldn't do. Good night. Good night. There goes the big boy. So soon, Mr. Gazzetti? I wouldn't want for Mr. Durant to get that check. Yes. And if he don't have a good time, I'm holding you responsible. Yes, sir. You don't have to go, do you? No. Good. You could get plenty for what's on your mind right now. What did I call you? A dirty-minded little rat. And darn if you don't go out of your way to remind me of it. <laughs> oh, you're a great guy. <laughs> Come on, Grady. I hope no one ever hurts him. Oh, he's all right. I like him. Have a cigarette? No, thank you. Oh, may I cool your wine? Not yet. Would you care to dance? That's better. I'd love to. Music is certainly a wonderful thing. 
I meet you, and five minutes later, you're in my arms. Do you have to have music? I don't know. Do I? <laughs> I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate and degrade me. So you're the man who put a grand piano in a girl's melody case. Oh, is that news all over town? Don't worry. I heard you were all right. You didn't demand down payment. Well, don't you count on that. If I give you anything, I'll demand payment. I hate to be in debt. <laughs> you tired? Do you ever do a dozen hours with the cops questioning you to see if you skip a comma in your story? If I were a nice, refined girl, I'd be home in bed putting on a swell hysterical act. <laughs> Instead of which, I'm here drinking champagne. Well, that's life in the big city. Where do we go from here? Well, of course, I'll stay here till dawn if you want me to. But I'd a whole lot rather go somewhere and cook a dish of eggs. You want me to take you home? Your home or my home? Anywhere you like. I hate the thought of going back to mine. Mimi's picture's in my room. If I see that, I'll probably bore. Were you a great friend? Mm. Like that. I loved her. Ah, it's tough love. Well, then, your place is out. How about mine? You know, I've got some eggs at my place that are just longing to be scrambled by you. <laughs> well, I'd hate to keep an egg waiting. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Is everything all right, sir? Yes, perfect, thank you. I'll put the show on earlier, if you like. No, 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 we're, we're tired. I wouldn't like Mr. Gazzotti to think that we hadn't treated you well. Oh, no, you treat us beautifully. Uh, would you tell Mr. Gazzotti that? Yes, I'll tell him. Thank, thank you very much. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Yes, I like it now better myself. Oh, I'll see about those eggs. Skip it. Come on, let's get it over with. What do you mean? The cross-examination. Really, I... Don't was... stall. You didn't ask me up here because of my fatal fascination. I was Mimi's pal. I was at Crelliman's party. You want to help Miss Leonard. It adds up too smoothly. You want them to get the man who killed Mimi, don't you? They've got him. And I hope he burns for it. Sadell didn't do it. I know that. Then who did? Well, that's what I want to find out. Will you help me? I'd do anything to get the man who did it. But the trouble is, I came to the party after Mimi had gone out on the roof. I'm no good. I don't know a thing. Oh, yes, you know a lot. A lot of things you don't know you know. Things that, that don't seem important to you, but they might mean a great deal to me. So you can help me by just going on talking. You think I might tell something? <laughs> exactly. Might take weeks. Well, I'll, I'll be patient. You can make yourself comfortable. Oh, I want to show you the house. Come on. Over here is the porch. There's where you can take your sun baths. Right. And, uh, here, the bar. <laughs> Over here, there's the, uh, the radio. This is where you can drive yourself to distraction. Nice. And uh, here. Uh... Very nice. <laughs> you think you can be comfortable? Oh, yes. But isn't it going to be pretty dull just talking all the time? Oh, well, I'll try to break the monotony. How? Well, by telling you how charming you are. That still be just talk? Oh, I'll get you a drink. Yeah. What is this? I'm going back to my place. Oh, oh, please don't. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Sure. Well, then why are you going? To get my things. Oh, come on in here. I'll lend you some things. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, here we are. Pajamas. I haven't much of a variety, but you may have a preference. How about it? Only pajamas? Yes, that's all. And you a bachelor? <laughs> what do you think? These or these? I think those look better on you. All right. Oh, here, I'll take that for you. Well, getting late. I think you'll be comfortable. Oh. oh. Is it broken? Crystal's cracked. Oh, dear. Never mind. I'll have it fixed for you. I wouldn't have anything happen to that. It was Mimi. She gave it to me. It's one of the few things Levitoff didn't get. Levitoff? Yes, pawnbroker. Poor Mimi always had her stuff in Hawk. Why did she go to Levitoff? Oh, because he gave her more money. He was a friend of Quellman's, and then he thought... What? Have I said something? Yes. One of the things I didn't know I knew? Yes. What is it? Levitoff's the one who swore he sold Sidel the gun. Well, I may be dumb, but it doesn't mean a thing to me. Oh, never mind. You're tired. Go to bed. I hate to quit on you, but cheer up. Maybe I talk in my sleep. Uh, oh, that's an idea. Well, good night. Good. Is that so? What do you mean? Did I say that, sir? No, you certainly did. You went... Did I? Yes. I mean, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, that's Stevens. Show him right in, will you? Hello, Steve. Good morning. Hope I didn't get you out. No, you didn't. Will you have some breakfast? No, thanks. I've got to be on my way. Get me some coffee, Layton, will you? Take those <clears throat> things out of here. Yes. Here's them pictures. Oh, fine. Is anyone here is talking here? No. Is that man of yours okay? Oh, he's safe as a church. Why? Well, I've been thinking. It don't look so good, me coming here, if anybody should know. Oh, you came here to ask my advice about putting money into a musical comedy. How'd you know I was sprouting wings? Well, you're on the Broadway spot for five years. You ought to be about right now. Bullseye. My advice to you is to put your money into government bonds. Mm -hmm. You can't cuddle up to a government bond. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, too. Anything else I can do? No, not a thing, Steve. Thanks. Hope to as much for you someday. Oh, yeah? I don't suppose you did anything when you told the commissioner I was framed. You don't owe me anything. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Durant, don't think of doing such a thing. You have everything to live for. You idiot. Here, put that tray down. Come over here. Come on, put down that tray. Come here, I'm going to try something. Stand up here. How the bullet would go about through there. Please, sir. Oh, don't be silly. It isn't loaded. It'd go straight through there. At that angle. Turn around. And then it'd come out there. Did it? Please, sir. Oh, here. Come on now, get down. A little farther, farther. All right, hold it there. Ah, uh, maybe she was sitting down. No, there are no chairs there. All right, come on, stand up. Stand up. Oh, hold it. Hold it right there. Now, that, that bullet would go right straight through. Come on, stand up. Now, I ask you. I'd have to do this. You couldn't do it, sir. No, neither could he. He must have been shot from above. Come on, clean this stuff up. Here, Good morning. I didn't want to wake you. Oh, I've been awake for hours. I'm all bathed and everything. Have you got another one of those? Oh, I'm sorry. Say, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, why didn't you yell? I didn't want to spoil your beauty sleep. Oh, thoughtful as well as alluring, eh? Alluring? Well, do you doubt it? Well, I did last night. I didn't exactly have to fight for my armor. A few more weeks of this and I'll be out of condition. Say, are you, are you still in love with someone or are you just decent? Well, uh, maybe I think you're decent. A girl that comes into a man's apartment at night? Well, you might have come here just to look at the Chrysler building. That must have been <laughs> I'm going to take a shower. I'll be with you in just a minute. Well, I'm going out and shop the button. I'm very much afraid I approve of your house. Oh, thanks. 
and its appointments. Thank you. And you. Thank you. And, um... And, uh... Now you may say something nice about me. Oh, that wouldn't be very difficult. Mr. Durant, please. Yes. Uh, you pardon me. Good morning, madame. Good morning. Uh, may I speak to you? Yes, yes, certainly. Go ahead. Um, I mean privately, sir. Of course. <laughs> Pardon me? He's positively upset. Yeah, he'll get used to it. Don't wait for me. Go right ahead. Miss Leonard's outside, sir. Well, why don't you show her in? But, sir, I... Oh, don't be a fool. I wish you wouldn't try to do all my thinking for me. Sorry, Sue. Come in. I hate to bother you, Jack, but why, it's terribly important. Why, it's no bother at all. I... What is it? What's on your mind? I want you to get off the case. Get off? Mm-hmm. I want you to get off it immediately. Well, you're the one that wanted me to take it. I know. I know, but I've changed my mind. All right. Tell me what happened. Well, a man just called me up. I don't know what his name was, but he said if you didn't get off the case, you'd be killed. Did he tell you anything more? He said that you were working for Gazzotti, and Gazzotti had a grudge against Kellerman, and he was out to get even with him. Mm, that's her story, is it? Please give it up. I know you took it on just for me, and I, I don't want the responsibility on my shoulders. No, it won't be on your shoulders. I wouldn't give up this case now for anything. But your life is in danger. You're not worrying about that, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, I know I've been headstrong and wanted everything my own way, but I've made mistakes. Bad mistakes. I don't want to make another. Yes, we've all made mistakes. But they aren't irrevocable. Don't worry. Everything's going to turn out all right. We'll get Tom off and you and he are going to be very, very happy. I wonder. Of course we'll get him off. Oh, I think maybe I'm... No, 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 not at all. Uh, Gertie. You come here, please. Gertie, this is, uh, Miss Leonard, Miss Waxted. How do you do? I'm afraid I interrupted. No, 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 you didn't at all. Miss, uh, Waxted is here because... Oh, I thought... try to explain. You don't have to account to me. Miss Leonard. No, no, please, Gertie. No, please let me talk to her. Miss Leonard. Miss Leonard. Yes? I don't want you to go like this. Not on account of me. It doesn't matter about me. Well, then But why? it does matter to him. He's in love with you. He wouldn't think of another woman. I'm only here because I can help on the case. I must go. I don't blame you for not believing me. I can hardly believe it myself. But it's the truth. He didn't think of me for one minute. I don't know why you're telling me all this. I'm not interested. He can lead his own life. Doesn't matter to me. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. Let's finish our coffee. You really can see the Chrysler building from here, can't you? Yes. Tell me some more about Mimi. Oh, oh yes, where was I? Well, when Mimi left... I wish I could do something. About Miss Leonard. Oh, forget it. Sit down, won't you? All right, come on. Well, when Mimi left Croman, he didn't seem to mind. But then you never could tell about Croman. He never knew what was on his mind. Well, that isn't very definite, is it? I don't think I'm much good. Oh, never mind. You're tired now. Sugar? Please. It was darn nice of you to let me stay here last night when I had the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> you knew what a relief it was not to have to look out on that roof. What roof? Well, my apartment looks right down on the place where Mimi was... You got a cigarette? Looks right down on us? Yeah, it's right in front of me. Let's don't talk about it. I'm going to get out of that place. Crowman can whistle for the rent. I'm going to move. What did you say? I'm going to move. No, no, you said something about Crowman. Oh, well, he owns the building. He does? Yes, does that surprise you? Yes. Those boys all sink their money in real estate now. They don't put it in the bank where the government can check on them. Why not give me your keys? I'll go down and get your things. Oh, that'd be terribly sweet of you. I'll get them in a minute. You'd be an angel. I'd love something besides that evening dress. Say, Layton, get my hat and coat, will you? Yes, sir. Look here. 
When I leave here, I don't want anyone to come in or out of that door. You understand? Yes, sir. Did you find it? No. It's here somewhere in all this litter. Now, well, here it is. The Oklahoma apartment. Yes, I know. Apartment 26A. Now, you'll find a suitcase in the closet, my clothes are in the bureau. Bring, uh, oh, well, uh, bring two of everything. Uh -huh. There's a little street dress, a blue one. Well, now, there are two, two blue ones in the closet, but you know the one I mean. It has red piping on the collar, a gourd skirt, and accordion pleated sleeves. Well, uh, in other words, you want the little blue dress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, bring anything and a couple of hats. Oh, no, I'm not going to bring you any hats. I don't want you to go out at all. Please, Mr. Durant. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to be frank with you. I don't want you to leave this room for any reason whatsoever until I say so. Now, you guessed last night that I brought you here to question you about Mimi. Someone else might have guessed the same thing. And they might object? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I'll take a chance and stick with you. You're a peach. Am I? Oh, well, give me the watch. My watch? Yes, yes. Come my... on, give it. Oh, yes, yes, to be sure. Anything you like. Would you like my bank book, too? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you think I'm taking advantage of you. I'm afraid you won't. Goodbye. I'd like as much as you can give. Not interested. What's the matter? Isn't it any good? Sure, the watch is all right. Well, can't we make a deal? You don't want to pawn that watch. You see, I know you, Mr. Durant. You don't need money. I wish you'd take that watch and get out of here. Wait a minute. What if I offered you $500? Get out. You get out of here before I call the police and tell them you're trying to bribe a witness. Get out! Say here. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, little Lord Fauntleroy. You want to see the big boys? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, me lord. What do you want me to do? Kick it for you? Hello, Angel. Hello. Ah, that thing's driving me nuts. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Beautiful. You're telling me? Tell him. He made me wear it. He thinks it's class. <laughs> Come on in. I want to see you. Gertie just phoned me. She thinks you're swell. Well, I think she's swell, too. Well, then it's 50-50 and nobody's hurt. She's helped me a lot. Yeah. Tony, they're letting out sewer contracts in Brooklyn. You could sell your mind at a nice profit. Now, Angel, let it never be said of a Gazzotti that he intimated a lady might be indiscreet. <laughs> Gee, get that lingo? A gentleman would never insinuate that one of the fair sex might be lacking in honor, your honor. Boy, I can even talk like you. Say, Tony, you said you'd do something for me. Give you my right arm, and I ain't no southpaw. Well, I want to break into somebody's apartment. Second story stuff, eh? Yeah. I thought maybe a friend of mine might have a bunch of keys and one of them might fit. Is that all? Yeah, have you got any? Say, a best in New York. Say, I want you to do something else for me. Just name it. I want you to make Levitoff talk. Uh-oh. Ask me something easy. Is that all your promises mean? You said you'd do anything? I ain't no miracle, man. Well, you can try, can't you? I tried. He won't talk for me. When did you see him last? About 15 minutes ago. Well, ten minutes ago, some guy walked into his shop and pumped him full of lead. Oh. Who did it? I don't know, but it's a cinch Coleman's got an alibi. Give me those keys. 
Now, wait a minute. Why don't you drop this thing before something happens to you? Let that guy fry. I'll drop it when Crulliman's arrested, charged with Mimi's murder. Say the word and I'll rough him out tonight. Say, what good is that going to do that poor kid down there in jail? I've got to prove that he didn't do it, that Crulliman framed him, put Mimi on the spot, and made it look as if he did it. Say, you racketeers can think of more rotten ways of getting even with people. You're not satisfied with just killing a fellow. You've got to torture him, and the more horrible it is, the better you like it. Oh, now, don't put me in Crowleman's class. Where are you going with those? Oklahoma Apartments. Why, that's owned by Crowleman. It's crawling with his mob. Yes, I own all that, but I want to look at Gertie's apartment. If that's not right, I'm going to look at the one above. Who lives there? I don't know, but I'm going to find well, out. Now, wait a minute. You can't take a chance. Joe, Joe. Yeah. Tell those mugs to stick close to Duran. Hello. Hello, that's you, Gertie? Yes. Say, that guy of yours is off his nut. Who lives in the apartment above you at the Oklahoma? Murtock. Murtock? Why, that's one of Crelliman's gunmen. Why? Who is he? He's going up there. He's going up there? Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt. What do you think we ought to do? We ought to tell Tony. You know what he'll do to us. I know. I won't tell him. Don't think I'm going to. Let's flip. Heads, you tell him. Tails, I do. Heads. Give me another drink. Which way is 26A? Down that way. Thanks. I'm going out. But Mr. Durant left instructions. I don't care. I'm going out. Begging your pardon, Miss Waxted, but I have my instructions. You can't go. Oh, I can't, can't I? Who'd think of finding you here? You would. I just dropped in to see Gertie. I thought she'd feel bad about Mimi. Is Gertie here? No. What do you want? Oh, that's all. But since we met like this, I thought it'd be a good idea. Well, if we had a little talk. How would you and Gertie like to take a trip to Europe starting immediately? With a retainer of 200 grand, you could buy that girl a lot of pretties. 
pleasure trip. No, not entirely. There'd be some business involved. I want somebody to go over there and contract for the output of the best distilleries in England and Scotland. Take about a year. Mm -hmm. Siddell would have got the chair by then, wouldn't he? 200 grand is a lot of money. No, not interested. Well, let's sit down and talk. No, about no, it. I told you I wasn't interested. You know, a sea voyage would be swell for your health. You know a man isn't safe in this burg. How do you know when a tax is liable to hit you? And the shooting. You never can tell when a stray bullet is liable to push you over. You may be dancing sometime with that little waxed girl. It's stuck up, and she and you'd get yours together. Like Levitoff, huh? I wouldn't know what you're talking about. No, no, I don't suppose you would. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I'll be going. Have it your own way, Mug. I try to be nice, you wouldn't have it. You wise guys can't learn a thing. If you have a little luck, you think it'll stick forever. But you won't be so lucky when I get through with you. Your threats are getting weaker, aren't they? But my actions won't. They don't mind. Now, wait a minute. I wouldn't do that if I were you. That's a rap you'd find it hard to beat. Well, what do you want? Oh, I thought it was somebody at my door. Did you get him? No. Why? He didn't come down. Did you bring a man out from 26? I answered the call, but he wasn't there. He's still in the building. Get him. If he's in one of the apartments, let him have it and the law's on your side. Now you two, go to the 27th floor, particularly the barracks apartment. Right. Down. Wait a minute. I said down. I heard you. You want to go down with the lobby calling with Crowlerman's mugs. 
You stopped Jim Coleman, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, anyone that hits him is a pal of mine. Come on over here. Get in there. Ride this down in the basement and get out the back way. Thanks, old man. Just give me a crack in the eye so it won't look phony. I can't do Come that. Come on, shoot it. And don't be gentle. Wait a minute, you mean it? It's for my own good. Oh, God, boy, here it comes. That was a beaut. You're not going to give me heart failure. If you ever lose I him again... I told you you got away. Wait a minute, it's my fault, Tony. Oh, okay, Angel. Did you find out who lived in that apartment? No. Well, I'll tell you. It's Murtock, one of Krellerman's killers. Yeah? He went out of there just a couple of minutes before you went in. Where's he now? Over to Conley's. Place. Where's Conley's? Why? Oh, I've got to talk to him. Lay off this thing, will you, Mr. Durant? What's the address? I'm not going to tell you. Come on, tell me. i got hold of something new. i got to see him. I'm not going to help you in a trouble. All right, stop the car. No, Let me off. You can't no, take no, a chance. Stop like the car. Stop the car. Oh, no, no, I know what I'm doing. You know where Conley's speakeasy is? Yes, I know where it is. Okay, take me there. Well, what are you waiting for? Where's Conley? What do you mean, straighten up? I'm going to Deliver the group to this address. My man will pay you off. Hi, big boy. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Rand. Last beer. Hey, come on. Hop on those service. Come on, will you? Hey, tell that guy, Burdock, to either shut up or get out. Oh, Tim, now don't make a scene. Oh, wait, Listen, Martok, you're not such a big shot to me. If you don't like this place, get out. Oh, yeah? You heard me. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. What, what I do? If you don't like this place, you can get out. Oh, listen, up. say, don't give me... Come on. Uh, they don't have to bother about that. I'll be back and clean up the joint a little later. Now, look here, Tony. What's the uh, matter, Angel? Now I know why you didn't want me to come down here. You didn't want me to see your little spy wax dead slipping murder to low down. Well, if you can't keep your hands on my side, keep them off the other. And another thing, you can tell your little friend Gertie she needn't come after her clothes. I'll send them down to her. Oh, it's funny, is it? Sure. A jealous guy's always funny. Jealous? You're crazy. <laughs> Not me, but you are. You're crazy about that wax dead girl. Yeah. <laughs> Layton. Yes, sir. What struck you? Miss Waxted, sir. I thought she was such a charming lady. And I wasn't the only one that was fooled. Get me a drink. But, sir... Oh, get me a drink. I thought you'd stop this drinking, Well, you sir. thought wrong. Get it, will you? I'll answer that. Boy, if you only knew how good you look to me. Well, it's good to be home. It's a wonder they didn't run me in decked out like this in broad daylight. Oh, don't be sore. I know you told me not to go out, but I had to. I don't blame Leighton for being sore. I didn't injure you for life, did I, Leighton? I hope not, madame. Well, aren't you glad to see me back safe and sound? I'm just amazed that you had the nerve to come back at all. What do you mean? I hate a double-crosser. A double-crosser? I saw you with Tim Murdoch. You're a very clever girl, but you can't get away with it forever, you know. May I suggest that you... Pack your things, and I'll see that Leighton brings them over. I don't suppose you'd like to hear my side of it. No, I... I don't think you could tell me any story that I'd believe. So you're going to drink, eh? 
Because I'm a double crosser, you're going to drink. Well, I didn't know I was that important to you. You're not. You can make a tramp out of yourself after I'm gone if you want to. But you stay cold sober until you hear what I have to say. The trouble with you is you've mixed with gyps and double crosses and two timers until you don't believe anybody anymore. Just because you're girl, did you, you think we're all the same? Shall I have Leighton pack your things? No, I'll do it myself. But before I go, I'm going to tell you something you don't deserve to hear. I didn't want Murtaugh to plug you when you went into his apartment. So I called him up and asked him to meet me in a speakeasy. I kept him there until I thought you were safe. Now I'm going. Gertie. Tony was right. What? Oh, I've been stupid. Very stupid. Of course. You're a man. You shouldn't have done this. Something might have happened to you. I knew. That was one of the things I knew, I knew. You're the strangest girl I've ever met. You're a new one on me, too. Why did you do it? Well, your life is just a little bit more important to me than mine. I realized last night that nothing mattered except you. I was yours for the asking. I don't know why. You see, I'm what they call straight. I know you are. And I thought I could be happy if I got you. Didn't matter if you cared for me or not. But it does matter. No, don't kiss me. Don't ever kiss me. Not if you don't mean it. Not unless you're crazy about me. Did you wreck it? No, there's a mirror. <laughs> I want you to know this. There aren't any fences around me as far as you're concerned. I know what your world is, and I know I don't belong in it. You'll be just as free as before you met me. Well, why don't you say something? Gertie, you're fine. You're nice. But what? But I couldn't. Well, if I don't mind, why should you? You rate something... something better than that. What? Marriage. You're asking me? I'm telling you what you rate. Just a moment. My usual luck. Hello? Oh, hello, Tony. Tony, I uh, want to apologize. I was all wrong. Yeah. Well, if Gertie ever double-crossed you, she'd be playing a harp with her pal Mamie and say, listen, here's some news for you, hot off the grapevine. Murtaugh's due for a ride any minute. Crowleman knows you're on his trail, and he's not going to take a chance on Murtaugh spilling anything. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tony says they're going to get Murtaugh, and I've got to see him before that happens. I've got an idea, but I don't know how it'll work out. What is it? I've got to get Krillerman out on his roof and have him there while I talk to Murdoch. I don't know how to do it. Well, I can do it. I can get him out there. No, I couldn't let you do that. It's too dangerous. Oh, Krillerman wouldn't dare touch me in his own place, would he? No, I don't think he would. Well, I'll call him up and say I want to see him about something important. He'll buy it. Do you think it's safe? Safe as I am with you. Not saying plenty. Hello, Tony. No, never mind. Gertie's going to help me. Okay, okay. I'll see you later. It's a long shot, a hundred to one. I'll take a chance. You sure you want to do it? When it comes to a showdown between you and Krellerman, I'm betting on you. You may be betting your life. When I bet, I bet all. Shall I call Krellerman now? Yes, will you please? Excuse me. Hmm. My luck is changing. Oh, hello, boys. Here I am. Yes. Wait here, I'll be with you in just a minute. Gertie's phoning Krellerman. Krellerman? What's the matter? Is that a new idea to you? Wait here. Yes, Jim. But what about the boys who are waiting for me? Will you call them off? Yes, it's very important. All right. 
In five minutes? All right, I'll leave in five minutes. Thanks, Jim. Good girl. That'll give us just time to get there. What do you want me to do when I get there? Well, he offered me a job abroad with you. Tell him I'll take it. That you persuaded me. I don't care. Tell him anything. But get him out on that roof. Do you think you can do it? I don't know, but I'll try. Gertie, you're the grandest girl in the world. <laughs> I'd rather be the cutest. Goodbye and good luck. Hey, what's that? Tell you on the way down. No, Tim Murdoch? Tough hood. Knocked off Curly Masters, but they couldn't pin it on him. Yeah, he knocked off Mimi Montaigne, and it can be pinned on him. He wasn't even there. No, he didn't have to be. He shot it from his window. Threw the gun down on the roof. Siddell picked it up. What have you got to prove it? Murdoch. What are you trying to do? Make a sucker out of me? I'm going to make a captain out of you. I hope you're not wrong. Duck, duck. All right, boys, frisk him. Get him out of here quietly. All right. Come on, down here further. No shooting, boys. I want to take this fellow alive. No, he didn't. I'm surprised at you, Murdoch. Bulls, eh? What's the idea? We just want to look out your window here. You know, there's a law against making a guy's face like this. What are you going to do? Call the police? Wait a minute. He must be tired. Send him down here. I want him to see the show. Give me his gun, will you? Hey, what are you doing? Getting ready to bump up the guy who stole my girl. But that's my gun. Exactly. Say, what is this? Ain't you guys coppers? Ever hear of a copper doing a little business on the side? They want Crulliman out of the way as much as I do. Crulliman? Yes, that dirty double-crossing Gertie's on her way down here. The minute she steps out on that porch, I'm going to get him. Say, wait a minute. You can't do that here. It'll be pinned on me. Sure it will. That's the big idea, Murdoch. Now, aren't you the bright boy to guess it, huh? You can't get away with a thing like this. I can't, huh? Now, you'll be a nice little boy, and I'll tell you exactly how we can get away with it. You were seen with Gertie and his speakeasy this afternoon. The bartender will testify that you got so ugly, he had to throw you out. You told Gertie that you were done with Crelliman's dirty work, and you were going to do some of your own. You were going to get him. That's a lie. I never said that. She told me, and I told the police we came down here to stop you, but we got here too late. We got here just in time to see you shooting out that window. We looked out and saw Crelliman dead on the porch of his penthouse. I'll say it's a plan. Well, what if you do with three witnesses against you? How far are you going to get with that? Yeah, but you're stuck on Gertie. She's too tiny. I'll tell him that. Come on now. Why not take it nice and easy? You were bound to get it sooner or later. A man can't be a killer without getting killed. And what difference does it make to you whether it's a bullet or a chair? It's coming to you. I thought you had more nerve. You can't do it. It's your kid. Oh, I'm a little disappointed in you. Why, if you frame me as beautifully as this, I'd be lost in admiration. You can't let him get away with a thing like Wait this. Wait a minute. Don't you understand? Crelliman has plenty on these gentlemen. He's threatened to expose the fact that they accepted bribes. He's a poor sport, Crelliman. I know of one man that did a killing for him and went to the chair for it because he couldn't prove that Crelliman was involved and Crelliman wanted him out of the way. I'm going nuts. Let me get a drink, oh, will you? Sure you I know, and I feel sorry for you. I know it's hard on your nerves. But you see, we have to get rid of Crelliman. So it's better for us to have a man all ready to take the rap. Oh, you'll enjoy it, Murdoch. I've killed Crulliman and the boys grab your hand and they force this gun back into it. That's a little touch that ought to appeal to you. Honestly, I defy anyone in the history of crime to point to a more complete frame-up than this. Point number one, you had to get Crulliman before he got you. Point number two, your window overlooks Crulliman's point. Point three, we enter the room just after you fired the shot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Would it be more artistic if we said we entered the room just before you fired the shot? No. No, we don't have to see you do the actual killing. We hear the shot. Crulliman's dead, the gun's in your hand, we break open the door. Oh, Steve, I forgot one little thing. Naturally, Murdoch struggles. We beat him up. That should be a very thorough job. Gee, it's funny that such a perfect plan should show a flaw. You bet it shows a flaw. And when I talk to the jury, you... June, Howdy! Jury, that's it. Why have a jury? We don't need one. 
In the struggle that follows our entrance into the room, the murderer is killed. He shoots at us, puts up a battle, and so we kill him. That's simple, plain, and economical. That's the way we'll do it. Now, just take it nice and easy, nice and easy, and we'll wait. You can't do that to me! There she is now. So we got our hats on? Wait till I hear what she has to say. Let her in. Hello, boys. Hello, Jim. Hello, Gertie. You want a drink? No, no thanks. She is warm in here. Don't see how you stand it. You're getting sensitive? <laughs> I guess so. I've been doing some work for you. Yeah? Well, let's go outside where it's cool. I won't tell you about it. Oh, it's all right. These are all friends. I know, but I won't talk to you alone. Come on, spill it. Well, you know I've been with Durant. He's crazy about me. I've been trying to find out what he had on his mind. Well, I found out. What? Come on, let's go outside and get some fresh air. Open one of the windows. You found out what? That he's losing his nerve. I've got him scared blue, telling him what's going to happen to him if he doesn't get out of this town. He told me to come down here and tell you he'd decide to take that trip you offered him. Yeah? And he's going to take me with him. It's just what I need, a nice little trip. Yes, you're going on a trip. But it's not going to be the kind you think. It's a shame, Gertie. If you'd kept your nose clean, you'd been all right. Are you kidding? No. Jim, you couldn't mean that. Get your things on, boys. So I'm going on a nice little ride, eh? That's it. May I make one last request? A man on his way to the chair gets what he wants for dinner. What is it? I'd like to take one last look at that skyline. I've had a lot of good times in this town. Oh, you're going to take a dive, huh? No. I'm on the level. If you think it's anything phony, come along. Let me alone, will you? I'm going nuts. There they are. Bring him over here. Hold him tight and keep your hand over his mouth. It's only fair that you should have a chance to see me kill him. You'll be dead in a couple of minutes. It ought to cheer you up to know that he went before you did. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe he's got something to say before his lights go out. If he screams, shoot him first, and I'll get Quillerman right away. Guns ready, boys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, will you? Give me a chance. Give me a break. I don't want to die, and I don't want to be shot at. Listen, if I give it to goods on Quillerman, what would you do for me? Ah, come on, quit stalling. We want Quillerman dead. I'll get him dead. I'll get him in the chair. He hired me to kill somebody. He'd get the chair, wouldn't he? Yes, of course he would. Well, I wouldn't, would I? No. I'd only get life, wouldn't I? That's right. Well, I'll talk. All right, come on, put it down, Steve. Get it down. Listen, Crowman hired me to kill Mimi Montaigne. I did it. I did it from this window. It's all the frame. I waited until she stepped out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it down, Steve, and make him sign it. Gertie, are you all right? Yes. She's all right. What happened, Tony? I'm sorry. I had to do it. I had to get Carlman. But you'll get me off, won't you? Tony! Tony! Tony, take it easy, old boy. I'll get a doctor for you. Wait. What am I? Call me that again. You're a dirty little rat, Tony. Here, you're a great guy. Mr. Drance back, madame. Can you get Mr. Sedale out? Yes, madame. Mr. Drance talking to the reporters now. I've never known so much excitement. Telephones, telegrams, congratulations. Much different than the last time. I hope this will teach Mr. Durant only to take murderers from the best families. Can I help him, madame? Yes, Leighton, do. I want to sneak out of here as soon as possible. I hate to see you go, madame. After that bump on the head, Leighton? I don't know how I'll ever explain that to my wife. She'll say that I've been up to my old tricks. <laughs> Are you a family man, Leighton? We have four children at home. Four? And another on the way home from boarding school. There it goes again. Hello? Hello? 
Oh, is that you on extension, Mr. Draft? Oh, excuse me. Miss Sue speaking to Mr. Durant. So they lived happily ever after. Tell me, Leighton, is pal to pal, do you like her? Well, she never struck me. Oh, I beg pardon, madame. I mean, she always seemed pretty and very nice. She never did appeal to the beast in me. Oh. <laughs> Take care of him. Take good care of him, won't you? I love him, madame, as much as you do. No, you don't. Andre Goo, monsieur. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Leighton, call up the steamship lines. Get a reservation for me for tonight. Canard line, the... Fr fr what? You're listening yes, to sir. me? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make a reservation for tonight. Any line at all. Well, Sadell's home sleeping in his own bed tonight. I've satisfied the reporters and everybody's happy. Only poor Tony. Well, you've been a peach. You did it all. Thanks for everything. I hope you have a nice trip. Goodbye. You little idiot. You're going with me. Uh, I'm going with you. Why, sure you are. Oh. Well, well how about Miss Leonard? Well, uh, well, she's a bad sailor. How about Paris? With you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd love it. They'll talk. Oh, of course they will. Do you mind? Not if you don't. Yeah. Leighton, the bridal suite. Or Mr. and Mrs. Jackson Durant. Well, I can't marry you. I'll ruin you with all your friends. I'm not even a lady. You're not, huh? Well, you'll do it till the lady comes along. <laughs> <laughs> 